Hello, I'm Rachel Staunton, the Artistic Director of the London Youth Choirs. Well, recently I had the pleasure of catching up with composer Shruthi Rajaseka in preparation for our upcoming concert, Voyage, on Monday the 29th of March. Here's what she had to say about this brand new commission, the Mayflower Anthem. Well, hello. Greetings from the UK to you over in the States. It's so nice to have you with us. Could you introduce yourself to the audience, please? Absolutely. My name is Shruti Rajasekar. I am a composer and vocalist, and I'm so thrilled to have been working with the London Youth Choirs these past few months, I guess, now. Amazing. Oh, welcome, Shruti. So nice to have you, and thank you for your interview time this evening. I've got some quick fire questions for you first, so there's no wrongs or rights, but we just want to get to know you. Sweet or savoury food? 100% sweet. <laughs> oh, okay. Pancakes or waffles? British pancakes, if they're American pancakes, waffles. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> hot weather or cold weather? Absolutely hot weather. It's currently negative 25 Celsius where I live, so hot weather for sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, oh, this is going to be a tricky one. If you could only have one, choir or orchestra? Oh, choir. 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 Yeah, that's the right answer for today. <laughs> uh, okay, work or holiday? Holiday. Holiday. Got to be. A, oh, I do love my job, though. Um, OK. <laughs> music making in person. Do you remember when we used to do that? Or online? Oh, got to say in person. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> Me too. So looking forward to that. Sweets or chocolate? Can I have both at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, let, let's both have both and, and share. <laughs> uh, last couple. Hot drinks or cold drinks? I think cold drinks in hot weather, if that's okay. Cold drinks in hot weather. <laughs> like the answer. And last one, London or New York? London, 100%. London! Yeah, that's the right answer. <laughs> Amazing. Well, um, just so we can get to know you a little bit more, what, what kind of music are you listening to in life at the moment? My goodness. I listen to a lot of things, but what I've been listening to on repeat for the last few days, it's very specific. A uh, South Indian composer... Uh, Shri Thyagaraja, it was, you know, it's his 250th kind of remembrance right now. And people have been doing, there was one that's a 50 hour program of something called Akhandaganam, which is where you sing music constantly. So usually live, you'll have people kind of tag in and out so that, you know, you can get a little bit of a break. Sometimes people, you know, they manage to sing the whole thing themselves, but there's a virtual one they've been doing. So 50 hours of that, that's a lot of music to, to get through. So I have a lot of music I can keep listening to with that. <laughs> Wow, that sounds amazing. Please send me the link. I'd love to listen to some of that. It also reminds me of some of our longer London Youth Choir concerts where we have eight choirs and everyone's coming on and off stage. Probably the parents feel like it's going on for 50 hours. But <laughs> Great. Um, and what made you want to be a composer? I loved writing songs as a kid. It was kind of part of my play world. I would go on the trampoline and then I would write a song about unrequited love, which I had not, ex you know, I had not experienced any of this. It was just I was almost like I was acting or something. I was putting on this guise and writing about it and then go back to the trampoline, of course, for more time. And what's the best part is I create these sound worlds. They're, they're, they're like my friends, but then I get to share them with my other friends, my real person friends. So that experience of making a little world and sharing it with people and we co-create it together, that is, that is everything for me. And I'm just so grateful that I get to do my absolute passion in my life. Yeah, I can really relate to that um, with sort of conducting choirs being my passion and getting to do that for my job. feel very, very fortunate. So you've written this brilliant piece for the children of London Youth Choirs, and it was to commemorate the sailing of the Mayflower ship from Rotherhithe from southeast London um, over to the States um, 401 years ago, <laughs> because, of course, we um, slightly had to miss the anniversary um, because of the big C. Um, so... How, how did you go about starting to write a piece like this uh, with, with us, for us? Yes. Actually, you know, we had a lot of time talking about what this piece was about. We had a conversation. We put out some videos together and we got these amazing texts from the singers of the London Youth Choirs. So that was running in my head. I wrote all of them out and I was playing around with them. But then actually coming to, you know, specific dots on the page, the actual notes, I started with the canon, which sort of is a, the central chorus of the piece. 
So I started playing around with that and I essentially wanted to figure out what would be a way to do a canon that kind of abides by those counterpoint rules at the same time is a little bit unique and maybe has, you know, intervals together that you wouldn't normally hear in something that's following the contrapuntal rules. So that was that was kind of the guiding area was the canon. And then from there, we wrote the verse and then the piano part and all of it came together. But it's all around this chorus that can function as a chorus in unison and a canon. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly an earworm for me. Uh, it goes, for, for the audience, it goes, Our boat and past are dark and cold, we carry through with hope for futures of brightness, of promises of light. And now on the brink of new, let us recall the old, so we do not do unto them what has been done to us. And if you're listening to... So beautiful to... in your voice, I have to say. I wish I could just have your voice voice in my ears like 24 7 do you think you could like send that over to minnesota <laughs> Um, I think my poor neighbours have heard a lot of my voice in these past few months, but there we go. Um, it's it's a lovely um, canon that you've written for us, and, and I love the rest of the piece as well. So audience, you can listen out for that little um, snippet that comes back round um, during the piece. And what, what was your motivation? You mentioned that some of the London Youth Choir members have written some of the lyrics, some of the text for this piece, um, and it was lovely receiving some of their poems. Um, and you, you've carefully woven the, those all in to, to make the piece of music. And what, what do you think is kind of the message of the song? It's interesting how we commemorate events afterwards. Uh, what we realise is that history isn't just one narrative, but often we create kind of a story, construct the story of what happened afterwards. So we're at a point right now in our current world where we're kind of examining some of those stories and looking for the narratives that might have been missed. Say when, this is 400 years ago and the myth of the Mayflower they say about 250 years ago is when that got constructed along with the founding of the US and all of these you know, grandeur ideas essentially. So when we think about today, I mean, I was really, really interested in this project because you came to me and said, we're thinking about the Mayflower kind of in the context of migration today. And are there parallels between that? Are there, are there differences between those? So that's how we started. And then when I began to look into this history myself too, I realized that the history that I was taught as a, you know, as a child in primary school is not the complete story. There were a lot of different elements missed out, including how this infected indigenous communities, how this, you know, you know, coincided with the rise of the slavery trade. And these aren't separate histories. They're, they're, they're very, very intertwined. So this piece for me was as much about looking to the Mayflower and seeing the experiences of those travelers and thinking about what migrants go through today, as we discussed, as well as seeing that they were far from perfect in many ways. So what does that mean for us as we go forward? How do we acknowledge that history and then try to do better ourselves? And I think there's no you know, better place to start than really looking at that history, studying it together in an ensemble like the London Youth Choirs, and then again, looking for a bright full, brighter, hopeful future and you know, moving forward into a, into a better time. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I definitely feel as we've unpacked the theme of what it meant for that uh, boat to set sail from here and um, kind of the hope of the voyage, but then the you know, the breakdowns that came as a result of it, I think it's really opened my eyes to um, different bits of history that I just didn't know about. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, as we end, uh, I, I know the people who set out on this voyage were probably feeling quite hopeful about a new life, a new world. It didn't necessarily end the way they thought, but I just wondered, what are your hopes for the future? What are your hopes for 2021 and beyond? If you could dream. <laughs> I am so hopeful when I see what the generation that's coming up is doing. And, you know, there's been so much discussion on the activism of, of the youth and all of these topics and themes. But what really inspires me is that I think they have more open conversations than even I had when I was in school. I think they're more willing to be open to different experiences and hearing from other people and putting themselves in the shoes of others. There's just 
so much compassion. I'm sure you see this every week in your rehearsals with them. So I'm so inspired by that. Yes, we're at a time in, in our lives now where the world is kind of confronting a lot of dark things, and those are hard conversations to have. But at the same time, there is so much light because especially in the younger generations, this is just being accepted and taken to heart and they, they embody the goodness that we all want to have. So I'm very, very hopeful about the future. Me too. And thank you so much for um, speaking to us. And thank you again for such a beautiful song. Uh, we hope we do it justice recorded individually from the living rooms of members of London Youth Girls Choir, London Youth Boys Choir, London Youth Southeast, and also London Youth Choir West. 